Here I've got a nice trigonometric identity that was suggested by the great integral or differential equations or now trigonometric identity suggester. So I'd like to thank this person greatly. So what we'll end up showing here is that the tangent of pi over 2n plus 1 times the tangent of 2 pi over 2n plus 1 all the way up to the tangent of 2n pi over 2n plus 1 is equal to minus 1 to the n times 2n plus 1. And we'll use the following complex exponential formula for the tangent function. And that is that the tangent of theta over 2 is the same thing as minus the quantity e to the i theta minus 1 over e to the i theta plus 1 squared. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's maybe call this product right here p, and then since we're looking at tangent squared, let's look at p squared. So let's write p squared as follows. This is going to be the product as k goes from 1 up to 2n of the tangent of k times pi over 2n plus 1. But notice we need it to be of the form theta over 2. So how can we do that? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Let's take the argument of this tangent and rewrite it a little bit. We'll write it as 2k pi over 2n plus 1 over 2. So that means in our formula right here, this theta is being played by 2k pi over 2n plus 1. Okay, so now let's apply this complex exponential formula to give us the following object. This will be the product as k goes from 1 to 2n of e to the i theta, but like I said, theta is this. This is 2k pi over 2n plus 1 minus 1 over e to the i 2k pi 2n plus 1 plus 1 and then quantity squared. Notice I no longer have this minus sign here because I'm multiplying together 2n terms. That's an even number of terms. Okay, so next up I'd like to notice that I've got a square here. That means I can change the order of subtraction without any problem because that just picks up a minus sign. So I'll do that. Maybe I'll box this off so it's not in the way. And that's going to give us the product as k goes from 1 to 2n of, now like I said, I'm going to write this as 1 minus e to the i 2k pi over 2n plus 1 over 1 plus e to the i 2k pi over 2n plus 1. And that's all squared. But now I'd like to introduce a variable into this, and I'd like to re replace the number 1 with a variable z, and then take a limit. So this is going to be equal to the limit as z approaches 1 of our product now, k equals 1 up to 2n, of, now we have z minus e to the i 2k pi over 2n plus 1 over z plus e to the i 2k pi over 2n plus 1 and then quantity squared. Okay, but now let's notice that here we're taking the product over all 2n plus 1 roots of unity except the one that corresponds to k equals 0 which is the z equals 1 term. And here we're taking the product of all of the odd roots of the 4n plus 2 roots of unity, except for the one corresponding to k equals 0, which would be negative 1 here. Okay, so let's just point out that here we're missing a z minus 1 term, so let's put missing. And then here, we're missing a z plus 1 term, so that's missing as well. So that means when we multiply those up, those will not be in this product. But we can actually find a pretty nice closed form without those, so let's do that. So this is going to be the limit as z goes to 1 
Like I said, this numerator is all 2n plus 1 roots of unity except for z minus 1. That means it's of the form z to the 2n plus 1 minus 1 over z minus 1 quantity squared. So that'll be all 2n plus 1 roots of unity except for 1. And this is all of the odd roots of 4n plus 2 except for negative 1. So we can similarly write that as z plus 1 over z to the 2n plus 1 uh, plus 1. And then here we have this is squared as well. Okay, but now let's notice that there's no problem right here with letting z tend towards 1. There's only a problem here where we have an indeterminate form. We could solve that a couple of different ways, maybe L'Hopital's rule. But I think the maybe nicest way to solve it is by factoring and canceling or maybe doing long division of polynomials. So let's recall that we can divide those polynomials and be left with z to the 2n plus z to the 2n minus 1 plus all the way down to 1 quantity squared. So that's just dividing z to the 2n plus 1 minus 1 over z minus 1. Okay, but after that we can evaluate z at 1. Notice that this part tends to the number one, so that's good. And then here we've got the sum of n plus one terms that are all equal to one. So that gives us two n plus one quantity squared. So that means we've shown our product is two n plus one squared. But that means that p is equal to plus minus two n plus one, which means we're almost to our goal as showing that it's minus one to the n times two n plus one. So we'll decide when we get a plus sign and a minus sign on the next board. So we derived our identity up to a sign on the last board and now we're ready to finish it off. So I've taken my original identity and expanded a little bit. So I've cut it in half. So notice I have these in terms of my product. So I'll write these are n terms. And here we've got another n terms of our product right here. Great. And then one thing that we can see is that the argument of tangent in all of these is between zero and pi over two, which means tangent is positive. Whereas over here, the argument is between pi over two and pi, which means tangent is negative. But how many times is tangent negative? It's negative n times. So we showed on the last board that this multiplies together to 2n plus 1 with a plus minus out front. And now we can determine when we get a plus and when we get a minus. And that's determined by how many minus signs we have right here, which is exactly n. So now we have this is minus 1 to the n. And that finishes the derivation of our identity, and that's a good place to stop.